This island was purchased by Elizabeth Sinclair, a Scottish landlord, and has been privately owned by her children ever since. First up is a sit down and drive through McDonald's located in Samoa. Also known as the most remote McDonald's in the world, sitting at an astounding 770 miles or about 4,600,000 feet from the next nearest franchise location, the restaurant, which is located inside a 150 year old colonial mansion on the small island country, features a McGaiga meal that costs 38 pounds, about $65 Canadian, and consists of of two Big Mac medium meals, two quarter pounder small meals, two deluxe cheeseburgers, and two eight piece McNuggets. Honestly, not a bad deal. You might think it difficult to sustain the franchise on such a small island, but the reality is quite the opposite in fact. Locals and tourists alike rejoice in the little slice of processed heaven and have kept the business booming since its opening in 2000. The restaurant is also a notable hotspot for the island's rugby team, with players enjoying the fast food delights so much that they were actually banned from partaking in such delicacies while competing overseas as their coach feared their inevitable overindulgence would ruin their chances at winning the World Cup. Next up we have the Arizona Aqua Arch Beauty located in Sedona, Arizona. While it might not be banned you just might miss it as when the restaurant was constructed in 1993 just off of Route 98. A, its existence was contingent on the fact that the restaurant blended seamlessly with the natural beauty of the 48th state. While at first this was a bit of a turnoff for developers, the collaboration with the state's city council and planning and zoning commissions actually turned out to be a quite lucrative one. The restaurant became yet another reason for tourists to make their way to the sandy state and those who were already there just had to check out this one off, off colored location and lay their eyes on the blue green arches they had heard so much about before heading off on their next adventure. And that brings us to our next location in New Mexico. Fun fact, while New Mexico is well known for being a hotbed for extraterrestrial action and activity, it is also home to one of the most out of this world McDonald's locations known to man. And possibly others? In case you haven't guessed by now, this McDonald's was built in the shape of a giant, unidentified flying object or extraterrestrial spaceship, if you will. The UFO shaped McDonald's graced the sunny state of New Mexico around 2011 and quickly became one of the coolest locations to date and a huge tourist hotspot for Big Mac hoppers and alien enthusiasts alike. With its bright red lights and glowing golden arches, who knows what kind of creatures this thing attracts. Now, it might not be banned, but it does look like it has the opportunity to blast off into hyperspace, so if you were looking for an excuse to visit, well, there it is. Number 7, Area 51. Hard to avoid talking about Area 51 in a list like this. Situated within the larger Edwards Air Force Base, Area 51 has been a hub for aircraft testing and pilot training since 1955. But as we all know, gaining entry into this place is basically impossible unless you work there. So what's happening inside those heavily guarded defenses? Well, officially, it's about testing cutting edge aircraft and training top notch pilots. There may also be top secret military planes and likely highly advanced technology housed in there as well. But the extraterrestrial angle is what fascinates the vast majority of people. Rumors have been swirling for ages that Area 51 is ground zero for UFO activity. According to many UFO and alien enthusiasts, this is where the government government stashes crashed flying saucers and reverse engineers alien tech. Even though the government finally admitted Area 51 existed in the late 90s, it didn't exactly clear up all the mystery. The classified documents spilled some of the beans about its aerospace research role, but the place still very much has this aura of intrigue around it. In at number 6 we have Club 33 in Disneyland. This Disneyland secret society adds a layer of mystery to the happiest place on earth. Located in several Disney parks across the globe, Club 33 is a hidden oasis of luxury and exclusivity. The story goes that Club 33 was originally conceived as a private escape for Walt Disney's to entertain special guests. Since its opening in 1967, it's become the stuff of theme park legend. Getting into Club 33 is no small feat. The entrance is unassuming, marked only by a simple address plaque and a discreet doorbell. Behind this unassuming facade lies a world 
of wonder, complete with a lavish dining area, exclusive events, and a balcony that offers a bird's eye view of the park. There are lots of urban legends about Club 33, that there are secret passages connecting the club to other parts of the park so that special guests can move through Disneyland out of the public eye. There's a pretty great story on Reddit about Club 33 and a thread asking folks who have worked there what the club is like. One Redditor chimed in saying he worked at Disneyland and a coworker of his had gone to the bathroom in Club 33 and was very impressed with the fancy toilet paper so he decided to take some of it home with him and then from behind him he heard a voice say make sure you leave some for me then he turned around and it was none other than Nicolas Cage which you probably guessed based on my incredible impression. Next, we move on to the Los Alamos National Laboratory, a scientific powerhouse in the mountains of New Mexico. It was established as Project Y during World War II as part of the Manhattan Project. It's probably most famous for its work in nuclear research. Nuclear, nobody likes how I pronounce nuclear. I said nuclear and it's nuclear. Nuclear. And it's probably most famous for its work in nuclear research. Uh, it's a sprawling complex full of some of the world's top scientists. The laboratory has been at the forefront of developing groundbreaking technology with a primary focus on nuclear weapons. It's the birthplace of the atomic bomb. Today, Los Alamos dives into everything from national security and defense to cutting edge scientific exploration. And there's no doubt they're working on some insane top secret projects in there. Classified technology and experiments that go way beyond what's publicly known. The Dugway Proving Ground. This facility was originally conceived as a testing site for chemical weapons during World War II. Over the years, its mission evolved to encompass a broader range of responsibilities, including the evaluation of defensive measures against biological and chemical threats. The facility became more prominent during the Cold War when the threat of chemical and biological warfare was a real looming threat. It became a hub for research and testing aimed at developing effective countermeasures and protective gear. Dugway has vast Fast and meticulously controlled testing grounds. The size of the area makes for a variety of simulations and scenarios, helping researchers and military understand the potential impacts of chemical and biological weapons in different conditions. Some speculate, though, that the facility is actually involved in experiments not just having to do with defense. Number three, Camp Perry. Established during World War II to train Navy Seabees, things became far more covert during the Cold War. As for exactly what goes on there now, there's still a bit of mystery to it. In the early 50s though, the base underwent a transformation, becoming a key component in the world of intelligence gathering. The most well-known function of Camp Perry is its training facility for the CIA, often referred to as the farm. This secretive aspect of the base focuses on training CIA officers in the art of espionage, covert operations and intelligence gathering. The site's remote location is ideal for this, adding an extra layer of security, shielding it from prying eyes. It's also classified as a black site, meaning it's a secret facility involved in covert activity. The base has, of course, been a breeding ground for speculation and conspiracy because of how heavily restricted it is. A significant portion of the activities going on there remain classified. There are theories that the base is involved in extraterrestrial research or that it houses advanced technology hidden from the public eye. The Nevada National Security Site, formerly known as the Nevada a test site, this expansive area is used for the development and testing of nuclear weapons located about 65 miles northwest of Las Vegas. The Nevada National Security Site has seen over a thousand nuclear tests since its establishment in 1951. These tests range from above ground explosions to underground experiments and today the site is no longer used for active nuclear testing but it's still used for various national security activities. The specifics of these activities these are unsurprisingly classified. The Nevada National Security Site is managed by the National Nuclear Security Administration, or the NNSA, a branch of the U.S. Department of Energy. Access to the site is restricted and it operates with a high level of security, which is good when there's nuclear bombs involved. And finally, we have the NRO, or the National Reconnaissance Office. Based in Virginia, the NRO is in the business of keeping an eye on things from way up there in the sky. And by things, 
I also mean us. They're the folks responsible for designing, building, and operating those hush hush reconnaissance satellites that orbit the Earth. These satellites are high tech eyes in the sky, capturing all sorts of intel from keeping tabs on potential threats to monitoring national disasters. Then they analyze the intel and pass the info on to other organizations like the CIA. Now, when it comes to secrecy, the NRO takes it to another level. They are very tight lipped about the nitty gritty details of their operations. Information is power after all. The question on everyone's mind of course is what are these satellites really peeking at? The specifics are classified. It's clear though that the NRO plays a big role in national security. Access to information about the NRO's day-to-day -day operations is very limited and that naturally fuels a lot of speculation. Like just how much are they really paying attention to? Up there. Starting us off today, we have the Baghdad Fort, located in Rajasthan, India. The fort was built in the village of Kaldara in the 17th century by Emperor Mado Singh for his son Man Singh, and is now known today as one of the most haunted places in India. The legend says that when the fort was built, the emperor made a promise to a man named Baba Blue Nath that the shadow of the structure would not touch the body of the man in his home where he practiced his meditations. Unfortunately, the emperor lied and in a bout of greed, built the fort much taller and wider than the two had originally agreed upon, which proved to be a big mistake as it is said that the hermit Baba Balu then cursed the village, which later led to its very abrupt destruction. In 1825, without warning, the village of Koldara, as well as 83 of its neighboring villages suddenly vanished in the dark. Now, new studies suggest that the disappearance of the villages may have been due to a devastating earthquake, but I'm not so sure. I mean, Baba Balu seemed pretty serious about the whole shadow thing. Today the fort is open for exploration from sunrise to sunset, but it is strictly off limits after dark. While there are some who have given in to temptation and broken this rule, we're still unsure of what goes on at Bangar Fort in the dead of night as those who have gone in at this time have never actually come out. Next up on our list we have Area 6. Not quite as infamous as its 51st counterpart, Area 6 is much less well known but still full of mystery and forbidden knowledge. Area 6 is just one area on the Nevada test site that is reserved for those with the highest security clearance. While this place isn't full of rumors and speculations of mermaids and aliens, it is the site that held four nuclear tests for a total of six detonations. This area includes an asphalt runway and some nearby by buildings, including a hangar. One of the buildings was originally constructed as a device assembly facility, but it now serves as the CEF, which is the Critical Experiments Facility. One of the most notable moments from Area 6 took place in 1982 during a very crucial time, as a live nuclear bomb, really want to put emphasis on the fact that it was a live nuclear bomb, was being lowered into the ground, presumably for one of the experiments the base actually came under attack by armed combatants. This of course was surprising and dangerous and frightening, especially considering the live nuclear weapon that was around at the time. As it turns out, this attack was actually just a security team that was conducting a drill. Looks as if someone messed up on the scheduling that day and it almost turned out completely catastrophic. Luckily, whoever was at the control point, which serves as the communication hub of Air Area 6, where they control the weapons triggers and monitor the test nuclear explosions. Luckily, those in the control area that day were able to recognize this mistake before anything got too out of hand. Moving on to Povelia Island in Italy. The small island located between Venice and Lido was once used as a quarantine center for those affected with the plague. The island is said to have hosted over 160,000 infected individuals who, upon their demise, were either buried in massively overcrowded graves or simply burned due to said overcrowding. There are even reports out there that state a whopping 50% of the island's soil is actually consistent of human 
remains. And believe it or not, it doesn't actually end there as in the late 1800s, the island was used as a mental hospital where it is believed one of the doctors routinely tortured his patients. And if that's not enough, because of all this, it is now believed that the island is extremely haunted, with some going so far as to say it's the most haunted place in the world. Reports of ghost sightings and hearing the screams of the deceased in the dead of night are by no means in short supply. In 1968, the Italian government decided it wanted absolutely nothing to do with the island, the smell of death, and all of the spooky baggage, and therefore it deemed it both banned and prohibited. You are more than welcome to take boat rides around the island, but to step foot on the sands of what is essentially just a massive graveyard is a big no-no. What's the creepiest place you've ever been? Let us know in the comments. Speaking of oddly shaped places to enjoy a nice hot meal served to you in a cardboard box, we have the plain shaped McDonald's located in New Zealand. Well, it's not just plain shaped, it's actually a decommissioned Douglas DC-3 aircraft, complete with an intact cockpit. While you can't actually order food from inside of the Big M emblem adorned airliner, you can grab your food from the counters located in the more traditional restaurant next door. And then bring them over to enjoy an experience like never before. That's right, I'm talking about eating microwave food on an airplane. To be honest, I'm not quite sure how either airlines or fast food restaurants cook their food, but what I do know is that Douglas DC-3 has a fully refurbished interior, complete with big comfy red chairs and shiny metal tables, creating a dining experience like no other that can accommodate up to 20 patrons at a time. What's the coolest McDonald's you've ever been to? Let us know in the comments. Have you ever tried to go through a drive through without a car? Oh, yeah, me neither. Well, if you ever wanted to, this next location is the place to do it, as cars are strictly banned from this ski-through McDonald's located in Lidvallen Ski Resort, about 200 miles northwest of Stockholm in Sweden, also known as McSki. The newly popular location has actually been around since about 1966, if you can believe it, and has been a staple for skiers and snowboarders alike. With McDonald's complete classic menu available for order, this pick-me-up pit stop is truly like no other, and as hitting the slopes can work up quite an appetite, I truly can't think of a better way to satisfy your hunger without cutting too much into your adrenaline chasing chill time. McDonald's is best known for being a quick spot that doesn't break the bank, but have you ever heard of a McDonald's that was a bank? Well, if you haven't, you're about to. With one user on TripAdvisor referring to it as the classiest McDonald's in the world, this one-off variation is located in, bear with me, Kristisand, Norway. While there is not much information of this particular franchise location to be found online, it is open to the public and boasts a classic McDonald's menu, as well as a few more items specific to McDonald's in Norway, such as the homestyle juicy burger, pasta salad with chicken or ham, hot wings, oatmeal with raisins, the chicken premier burger, and something called a McToast. Because of its location, we of course have to assume that at one point, many areas within the walls of what is now a cool place for a quick bite were strictly banned from the public, given that the restaurant once contained safes and vaults full of copious amounts of cash. Next on the list we have a McDonald's, an extremely popular mega capitalist McDonald's, laughably and ironically located directly outside the entrance to the Museum of Communism located in Czechia, Prague. Now, Honestly, in this instance, I'm surprised it wasn't banned from ever being open there in the first place. But it seems the Prager people have quite the sense of humor as there is an ad posted outside of the museum that reads, Museum of Communism, above the casino, right next to the McDonald's. So I guess they really are above capitalism. The McBarge, as it was once known, is next on the list. This creepily eerie and now abandoned location was once the forefront of innovation for the franchise when the floating restaurant was opened in 1980. It was a place for sea dwellers and land lovers alike to indulge in what seems to be everyone's common ground, cheap food and good scenery. However, the magic of the marina based maiden didn't last long as only five years after, in 1991, the new owner of the grounds forced the boat to depart from the docks, making it rather difficult to keep the business booming. Since the McBarge's departure from the McDocks of Vancouver, it has been anchored and abandoned just near British Columbia. Since then, many people have been going out to see this abandoned national treasure, and there has even been some public interest in refurbishing and reopening the restaurant as well. Believe it or not, New Mexico wasn't actually the first place to have a space-themed establishment. The 
OG extraterrestrial spacecraft turned restaurant was actually located in Alconbury, Cambridge in England and was built in 1990 and converted into a McDonald's shortly after in 1993. But much like the McBarge, the adventure was short lived as it shut down just seven years later in the year 2000. The UFO inspired structure adorned with the golden arches we all know and love was, at the time, the definition of space aged architecture. The restaurant showcased a computerized ordering system and a drive through that often queued all the way out into the main road. A former employee by the name of David Meredith described the restaurant as having a gloomy atmosphere, saying that although it was space age, the lights were dim and whoever had crafted the structure, it seems had forgotten to add windows. While this location is not necessarily banned, it is unable to be reached by the public or anyone else for that matter as it was sadly demolished in 2008 after having been abandoned since its closure just 8 years prior. And that brings us to our final location in the infamous Guantanamo Bay, an area best known for being home to the largest detention camp under the control of the United States and the United States military. Since 2002, roughly 780 detainees have been held at the center, however in a report released in 2023, it seems that number has since dwindled to just 30 persons who are still being kept within its walls. To enter Guantanamo Bay, they would require area clearance and a special kind of government issued passport. So you might be wondering, how did a McDonald's end up there and why? Well, the only McDonald's in Cuba opened in 1986 and has since been a staple of home to the military personnel residing there while working for the US government. And as long as the US continues to exercise its jurisdiction and control over the Bay Area, I'm guessing it's here to stay. Now while it's no secret that American soldiers tend to enjoy some McDonald's every now and then, it appears the prisoners living on the base might too, as there have been rumors of inmates being offered happy meals in exchange for their cooperation. Of course, this area is completely banned to members of the public, so don't be expecting to indulge in any Big Macs or happy meals the next time you hit up Cuba. Let's delve into the mystical allure of the Issa Grand Shrine in Japan, a pinnacle of spiritual significance in Shintoism. Revered as one of the holiest and most sacred sites, this shrine embodies a tradition steeped in antiquity and mysticism. Uniquely, the Issa Grand Shrine is part of an ancient and ongoing ritual where it is demolished and rebuilt every 20 years, a practice known as Shikinen Sengu. This ritual, deeply embedded in Shinto beliefs, symbolizes the concept of impermanence and renewal, essential to maintaining the purity and power of the shrine. The materials and techniques used for reconstruction are kept traditional, honoring centuries-old craftsmanship. Access to the shrine's innermost sanctum, where the sacred mirror, considered to be one of the three imperial regalia of Japan, is kept, is extraordinarily restricted. This privilege is reserved solely for the shrine's priestess or priest, who is usually a member of the Japanese imperial family, and no other person. Not even the emperor is allowed inside. This level of exclusivity and the profound cultural and religious significance of the shrine make it a fascinating, albeit very mysterious, destination. Next up we have Room 39 in North Korea. Room 39 in North Korea represents a layer of mystery within an already secretive nation. Believed to be nestled in the heart of a ruling workers party building in Pyongyang, Room 39 is enveloped in mysterious tales and a lot, a lot of speculation. This clandestine entity is rumored to be a linchpin in a network of illegal activities primarily focused on generating foreign currency for the regime. It is said to be involved in a wide array of covert operations ranging from counterfeiting currencies to international insurance fraud and even illicit substance trafficking. The reality of what transpires within its walls is known to only a select few, shrouded in the utmost secrecy. This veil of mystery only compounds the intrigue surrounding Room 39, making it a focal point of international curiosity and speculations about the lengths to which North Korea goes to sustain its economy and fund its leadership's agendas. Next up, we have the Jiangsu National Security Education Museum in China. This museum, located in the heart of Nanjing, represents a unique facet of espionage history, but with a catch. It is strictly off-limits to foreign 
borders. This policy is not just a formality, it is rigorously enforced, underscoring the sensitive nature of the exhibits within. Inside, the museum houses an extensive collection of Chinese espionage equipment and confidential documents, offering an unparalleled glimpse into the shadowy world of spies and secret agents. It's a veritable treasure trove of state secrets, spy gadgets, and covert operations accessible exclusively to Chinese citizens. From cipher machines used during revolutionary times to modern day surveillance equipment, the museum provides a comprehensive overview of China's intelligence history. It stands as a testament to the country's very complex relationship with espionage. It is shrouded in mystery and very tightly controlled, mirroring the secretive and exclusive nature of the intelligence world itself. Coming up next, we have the Morgan Stanley's Data Center located in New York. It is recognized as one of the most secure data centers globally. This facility plays a pivotal role in the world of finance, handling an immense volume of sensitive financial data and transactions daily. The security and integrity of this data are paramount given its potential impact on global markets and the privacy of countless individuals. Consequently, the data center employs state-of-the-art security measures, both digital and physical, to safeguard against any form of breach or intrusion. The exact location and intricate details of this facility are a closely guarded secret, known only to a select few within the organization. The secrecy is maintained not just to protect the center from physical threats, but also to safeguard against cyber threats, which are increasingly sophisticated in the financial sector. The data center's operations are a testament to Morgan Stanley's commitment to security and confidentiality, reflecting the immense responsibility they bear in the global financial landscape. This sounds really a lot like an ad for Morgan Stanley. You're welcome, guys. I'll, I'm doing it for free. It's like a fortress for all things financial, all right? You're welcome, Morgan. On a bit of a lighter note, the Coca-Cola Vault is up next on the list. The vault located in a museum in Atlanta is, as you've probably guessed, home to the notorious Coca-Cola recipe, or the secret formula, some might say. The recipe, which dates all the way back to 1986, was originally kept at SunTrust Bank, under lock and key from 1925 up until the company's 25th anniversary in 1996. When the super secret recipe was relocated to the high tech vault in Atlanta. But any visitors hoping to catch a peek were sadly disappointed as even during the transportation period, the recipe was kept under lock and key, securely sealed inside a metal box. Of course, the 10 foot vault in which the secret formula is kept is strictly off limits to the public. While the recipe is allegedly written down and highly protected, it is said that there are two people in the world who have actually laid eyes on it and have the formula memorized. These two individuals are forbidden from ever flying on the same plane so that in the unlikely event of a crash landing ending in the tragic death of one, the other would still be able to carry on the legacy. Not sure about you guys, but for such a big safe, I kind of wonder what else they're hiding in there. Next up around our halfway point is the Dome of the Rock, an architectural marvel and a spiritual mystery that stands majestically in Jerusalem, captivating the imaginations of millions worldwide. Covered in layers of history and reverence, this iconic structure is not only a masterpiece of Islamic architecture, but also a symbol of the complex tapestry of faiths in Jerusalem. For many, it remains an elusive treasure as access to the interior is extremely limited, especially for non-Muslim visitors, adding to its aura of mystery. Perched atop the ancient and sacred Temple Mount, the site whispers tales of religious significance, rumored to be the place where Abraham prepared to sacrifice Isaac and where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. The shimmering golden dome visible from various points in the city serves as a beacon of intrigue, silently guarding centuries old secrets and religious mysteries. This restriction on entry only amplifies the dome's allure, making it a very tantalizing emblem of the untouchable, covered in myth, history, and spiritual significance. 
And that brings us to the Fukushima Exclusion Zone in none other than Fukushima, Japan. The Exclusion Zone came to be as a result of a nuclear disaster that occurred in March of 2011. On March 11th, Japan was struck by a massive earthquake followed quickly by a tsunami in which waves reaching more than 10 meters high engulfed the island. The devastation of the natural disaster caused the reactors of the Daiichi nuclear power plant to overheat, melt, and subsequently leak harsh radioactive materials into the surrounding environment. Not only did this cause the area to become banned to members of the public, it also resulted in some pretty interesting effects on the surrounding areas and wildlife. Mutations were reported to be found in butterflies and on the leaves of many trees surrounding the site of the meltdown. Scientists worried about the lasting effects this might have on the area, but a recent study suggested that there was no significant increase to the mutation rate within the area. While well, parts of Fukushima have now been reopened for public exploration, the site of and the immediate area surrounding the meltdown are still of restricted access. Despite these restrictions, in 2016, a Malaysian photographer and two colleagues managed to sneak their way into the prohibited area and after emerging back into the better known world, described it as a ghost town and said being there made them feel as though they were the last people on the planet. Kicking off the top three, we have the Dai Hiwa Kinanto, or the Great Peace Prayer Tower, which is situated in Osaka, Japan. This place stands as a solemn monument dedicated to the memory of those who lost their lives during World War II. This poignant memorial is a symbol of peace and reflection, embodying the hopes for a world without war. Within its grounds lies an especially poignant section, an underground library. This library is a repository of deeply personal and historic artifacts, a collection of letters written by soldiers during the war. These letters, often the last messages sent to their families and loved ones, offer a window into the human experiences and emotions of wartime. However, access to this underground library is not granted to the public. It remains a restricted area preserving the privacy and sanctity of these personal and historical documents. This is exactly what sets this place apart from other memorial buildings. It's not just a memorial in the traditional sense, but also a guardian of personal histories and a testament to the individual lives affected by the ravages of war. And of course we had to include the extremely bizarre yet strangely captivating Morgan Island. With more than 2,000 acres of beautiful land located in South Carolina, the island has often been referred to as Monkey Island, which is quite fitting as the area is home to over 4,000 wild rhesus monkeys. The species, however, is not native to the island, but was rather brought over from Puerto Rico in six shipments during 1997 and three more in 1980 in an attempt to relocate these silly little creatures. Now, if you're wondering why on earth the lovely people on the beautiful island of Puerto Rico wanted the monkeys gone in the first place, well that's because they weren't just any regular old rhesus monkeys, but they were rhesus monkeys infected with the herpes B virus, which I will save you the Google search, yes, humans can 100% contract the virus from coming in contact with the affected monkeys. So it's safe to say that the fact this island has banned public entry, strictly reserving the area for researchers only, is not something any of us are too torn up about. I mean, monkeys are cute and all, but I'm quite happy to count myself out from this particular tropical paradise. Finally, rounding out our list today, we have Club 33, an exclusive and elusive club nestled in the heart of Disneyland. It is a symbol of luxury and exclusivity in a place otherwise known for its accessibility and universal appeal. This well-kept secret of Disneyland, discreetly located in New Orleans Square, boasts a waiting list that spans years, reflecting its allure and very exclusive nature. Gaining membership to Club 33 is not only a matter of patience, but also of financial might, as it comes with a very steep price tag. Rumored to be in the 10 of thousands of dollars for initiation fees, plus annual dues, of course. The club offers its members a unique experience, hopefully 
can thank God if it costs tens of thousands of dollars, including access to a gourmet restaurant, a lounge, and a range of exclusive events and perks unavailable to regular park visitors. The interiors are lavishly decorated, offering an elegant respite from the bustling energy of Disneyland. With its rich history having been originally designed as a place for Walt Disney to entertain dignitaries and VIPs, Club 33 remains one of the most coveted hidden gems in Disneyland, offering a side of the park that the public never sees and adding an air of mystique to the already magical environment. First up, we have the Vatican Secret Archives. The Vatican Secret Archives serves as a storage space for numerous documents relating to the Catholic Church. The Pope, as the sovereign of Vatican City, owns the material held in the archive until his death or resignation, with ownership passing on to his successor. Now, the archive contains state papers, correspondence, account books, and many other documents that the church has accumulated over the centuries. Now, some of these documents date as far back as the 8th century. Now, there are said to be papal accounts of a letter from Michelangelo to Pope Julius II, a letter from Mary Queen of Scots written before her execution, and Martin Luther's excommunication document. Now, most of the archive is located underground, and it has 53 miles of shelves with 35,000 volumes in the selective catalog alone. Now, it's forbidden to enter it for anyone except for researchers with special permits to access. But even for them, there are multiple limitations to what documents they can view. Not to mention, only paper, pencil, and computer laptops are permitted. No ink, pens, or any digital camera photography are allowed inside. Only five requested articles can be taken out at a time, and only 60 academics per day are allowed inside. So even if you can visit, there's a lot of restrictive rules you would have to follow. Next up is the Bangar Fort, India. Okay, so this point is a little bit of a cheat because the Bangar Fort isn't completely banned to access because tourists can visit it in the daylight, but from sunset to sunrise, there is a strict ban on entering this place. Generally regarded as the most haunted place in India, this 16th century fort is full of legends about ghosts and curses. Some visitors pointed out that they get a weird sense of paranoia as if someone is following them around, and that's why many guests don't stay long in the area. Now, as per the legends, Bangar Fort has been cursed by a hermit named Guru Balu Nath. Now, the spot where the fort had been built once served as the meditation spot of the sage, and when the king pleaded with him that he wanted to build a fort there, the sage agreed on one condition, that the fort's shadow should not touch him. Now, the king agreed, but did not follow through, and the curse of the hermit followed, which led to the entire village being destroyed. You might be wondering who happens to those who dare visit the Bangar Fort at night, but no one knows, because according to locals, whoever tries to break the rule mysteriously disappeared after it, as it is believed that spirits roam there at night. Yeah, with the way this is described, I don't think I'd ever want to go there during the day. Now we have Heard Island, Australia. One of the most remote territories in the world, Heard Island, is considered an Australian territory, even though it's located between Madagascar and Antarctica. It's home to a wide range of animals, such as seals, penguins, and marine birds, as well as more than 40 glaciers. At one point, it was open for visitors, but they ended up closing it to public. There were a couple reasons for this, as in the year 2000, researchers noticed a huge lava flow coming from the island's massive volcano called Mawson Second. Heard Island is known for its poor weather conditions, and third, it's too remote to be safe. It's located in a minimum two-week sail to the closest major landmass, so I think it's a good idea that they close this down. Next up, we have the Woomera Prohibited Area, sprawling across the arid landscape of South Australia. This place stands as one of the world's largest military testing ranges. Covering an area larger than some countries, this vast, desolate expanse is full of secrecy and tightly guarded against public intrusion. Established in the Cold War era, it has been an essential site for testing a wide array of military hardware, ranging from cutting edge missiles and advanced weaponry to unmanned aerial vehicles and drones. The testing conducted here is crucial for national defense and international collaborations, involving partners like the United States. The airspace above Woomera is regularly cleared for testing, creating a temporary no-fly zone that underscores the seriousness of the activities undertaken. Despite its importance, very little is known about the specific projects and experiments conducted within its boundaries, as strict security measures and confidentiality agreements keep these details out of the public eye. This combination of vast 
niceness, secrecy, and advanced military technology makes the Woomera prohibited area a fascinating and intimidating locale, far more restricted than most classified sites globally. Nestled in the ancient city of Oxum, Ethiopia stands a modest chapel believed to be the final resting place of one of history's greatest relics, the Ark of the Covenant. This sacred chest, as described in the Hebrew Bible, is said to contain the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Shrouded in divine mystery, the Ark's presence in this chapel is guarded by a single monk appointed for life. This guardian, sworn by a vow of silence and seclusion, is the sole human allowed to gaze upon the Ark, making this one of the most restricted religious sites on the planet. This strict access and secretive nature of the chapel's contents have imbued it with a profound sense of reverence and intrigue. Pilgrims and tourists may visit the compound, but the chapel itself remains a tantalizing mystery, its secrets preserved within its unassuming walls. The blend of myth, religion, and historical significance surrounding the Ark continues to capture Activate the imagination of believers and skeptics alike, making the Chapel of the Ark of the Covenant a unique and mysterious site in the tapestry of human history. Moving on down, we have the Heard Island Volcano. Heard Island, situated in the sub Antarctic, is one of the most remote and inhospitable places on Earth. Dominated by the active volcano Big Ben, the island presents a landscape of dramatic natural beauty and daunting extremes. The harsh climate, characterized by persistent cold, fierce winds, and heavy snowfall renders access to this isolated island almost impossible. Besides its challenging geography, Heard Island is designated as a protected nature reserve, emphasizing conservation and scientific study while strictly limiting human interference. This combination of natural barriers and legal protection ensures that Heard Island remains one of the least disturbed ecosystems on the planet, a pristine sanctuary for wildlife, and a natural laboratory for scientists studying climate change and volcanic activity. Next up, we have the Royal Bedroom in the United Kingdom. Located in the heart of Buckingham Palace, the Queen's bedroom, well, I suppose it's now the King's bedroom, epitomizes exclusivity and is undeniably one of the most restricted rooms in the entire United Kingdom. This room, steeped in royal history, is a sanctuary for the reigning monarch, filled with priceless artifacts and personal treasures. Its notoriety peaked in 1982 when an intruder, Michael Fagan, shockingly made it past palace security and into the room, an unprecedented breach that shook the foundations of royal security. This incident prompted a massive overhaul of palace security protocols, of course, transforming the bedroom into a veritable fortress within Buckingham Palace. Access to this room is now more tightly controlled than ever, reserved for a select few and guarded with the highest levels of security, ensuring that such a breach remains a once in a lifetime occurrence. Moving on, we have Area 122. Area 122, ensconced within the Antarctic Treaty's no go zones lie secluded on an island in the Enderby Land, a remote part of Antarctica known for its harsh and unforgiving climate. This area is designated as a specially protected zone, aimed at preserving its unique and fragile ecosystem. It's a sanctuary for an array of polar wildlife, including species that are not found anywhere else on the planet. The strict restrictions in place mean that access is extremely limited, with tourists and even scientists requiring special permits to visit. These permits are seldom granted, ensuring that human impact on the area's pristine environment is kept to an absolute minimum. The isolation and protection of Area 122 make it one of the most intriguing and least disturbed natural areas on Earth, a true example of untouched wilderness. Next up, we have the Granite Mountain Records Vault. Owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Granite Mountain Records Vault is an awe-inspiring facility carved deep into a mountainside near Salt Lake City, Utah. This massive vault, constructed in the 1960s, is a fortress designated to withstand natural disasters and nuclear attacks. Its primary purpose is to house and protect a vast collection of genealogical and historical records, including millions of microfilm 
reels containing family history and vital records from all over the world. The security measures surrounding the vault are extraordinary, featuring state-of-the-art technology and rigorous protocols to ensure the preservation and protection of these invaluable records. The public's access to the vault itself is extremely limited, with the church maintaining strict control over who can enter the facility. This secrecy and the critical nature of the documents stored within add to the vault's mystique, making it a topic of fascination and intrigue among both genealogists and just the general public. Next up we have Porton Down. A British research facility located in Wiltshire, Porton Down is a hub of scientific inquiry dedicated to the study of chemical and biological weapons. Established during the First World War, it has since been at the forefront of research in these fields. The activities and experiments conducted at Porton Down are of the highest classification, covered in secrecy and subject to strict government oversight. This veil of mystery has made the facility a magnet for conspiracy theories and controversies over the years. It has been associated with everything from unethical human testing to the development of advanced, undisclosed weaponry. Despite its notoriety, Porton Down plays a crucial role in national defense, helping the UK to understand and defend against chemical and biological threats. However, the exact nature of much of its research remains a closely guarded secret, adding to its mysterious and somewhat ominous reputation. First up is North Sentinel Island. North Sentinel Island is one of the most forbidden places in the world. It is where the Sentinelese tribe resides and they usually resolve to violence to keep their isolation still going. The Sentinelese tribe have existed on the island for more than 50,000 years as per the protection given by the Indian government. This island is forbidden for any visitor of any kind and throughout history, encounters with the population have been met with violence. Now, in November 1961, Michael Rockefeller traveled to see the Sentinelese tribe when he went missing. Despite a two week search and a witness who supposedly saw him swimming in the ocean, his body was never found. It said that he was eaten by tribe members as they were involved in that practice and they sometimes ended people's lives as part of rituals. And it's also been said that his boat overturned and he swam to shore to look for help and that's when he was attacked as nobody ever saw him again. Some members of local tribes have told stories indicating that Michael's life ended upon reaching the shore and that his body was cut up and the the parts were handed out as gruesome trophies. And guys, please never try to go to that island, like, ever. <laughs> Next up is Sulva Bay. Sulva Bay is home to hundreds of shipwrecks with 216 occurring between April 1915 and January 1916 alone. Now, but even more concerning is the bizarre weather phenomenon that resulted in a mass disappearance. In August 1915, an entire army of soldiers vanished after walking into a strange looking cloud. Onlookers reported seeing a large silvery cloud slowly engulf the British colonel, 16 officers, and 200 150 soldiers in a forest near the coast. Eventually, the cloud rose and joined with several others before moving against a strong wind and disappearing from view. Later, 180 bodies were found scattered over one square mile near a small farm. Owen has said it looked like they fell from a great height. Now, there is still no explanation for the deaths or missing men, but UFOs, a portal to a parallel universe, and a secret chemical weapon are all among the more popular theories. But regardless, that whole situation is just so strange. The next location is Pyramid Lake. As one of the largest natural lakes in Nevada, Pyramid Lake covers 125,000 acres and is surrounded by many unique rock formations, with a large pyramid-shaped one in the lake that inspired its name. Pyramid Lake has a dark history that some believe led to the several disappearances. Now, the lake saw one of the bloodiest battles between the Native Americans and white settlers in the state when the local Paiute tribe joined with the Shushones and Bannocks. Together, they ended the lives of more settlers than ever before. In addition, the Paiute tribe had long believed that Pyramid Lake was cursed. According to one legend, a mermaid from the lake fell in love with a tribesman, but his family disapproved of their union. Furious, she cursed the lake and everyone who lived around it. Now, another legend involves demons who appear as creatures known as water babies. They are said to haunt the lake just under the surface, waiting 
attempting to pull in unsuspecting fishermen. Now, visitors report hearing sounds of crying on the water during the spring, which just so happens to be the same time of year that most boating accidents occur. These legends are often referenced anytime swimmers, scuba divers, or boaters disappear in the lake under strange circumstances. Moving on to Pravichka Brana, Czech Republic. Europe's largest natural sandstone arc, Pravichka Brana, is one of the most well known attractions in the Czech Republic. The span of the arc at the bottom is 87 feet, and the opening is 52.5. Five feet high. The width ranges from approximately 23 to 26 feet, and in the narrowest, the arch is about 9.8 feet thick. Its frequent attendance used to cause increased erosion of the upper parts and destruction of the gate. Therefore, access of the public to the gate has been forbidden since 1902. Now, the purpose of the protection is preserving the current state. The more visitors that come to the area, the more likely it is to collapse one day. So, to reduce erosion, tourists can now see it from afar, but not climb onto it. Now, unfortunately, Unfortunately, the erosion process continues even without the help of visitors, and according to geologists, the arch can still collapse in the future, but at least the band slows down the process and gives us more time to admire it. Let's discuss the Mausoleum of King Shihong, China. Founder of China's Qin Dynasty, founder of China's Qin Dynasty, Emperor King Shihong, who reigned between 221 BCE and 210 BCE, was the first emperor of a unified China. He created the Great Wall of China as well as laying down a vast national road system. It was King Sheng Hung who built a huge stone army known as the Terracotta Army, which consists of some 8,000 life-size statues of soldiers, as well as numerous horses and chariots. Surrounding this place, the Terracotta Army was likely built in order to protect the emperor in the afterlife. Now, although the tomb of the emperor was discovered upon unearthing the Terracotta Army in 1974, it hasn't been excavated yet. According to the opponents of the excavation of the tomb, modern technologies can't prevent its destruction. For this reason, access to it is still forbidden by the Chinese government. All we know about it now is that it consists of a complex network of caverns underground filled with objects that, according to those who buried him, the emperor could have needed in the afterlife. Now, I gotta agree with this one. I think we should leave him alone. Now we have Mezgoria, Russia. Being the largest country in the world, Russia is certainly full of surprises. Now, it has a lot of mysterious sites, towns, and other special places. Like for example, Mezgoria. It's a closed town hidden somewhere in the southern Ural Mountain. Now, to keep off anyone who wants to enter the town or even come close to it, it's encircled by two battalions. Now, what's so important about this area? Well, it's not 100% clear what this area is and why it's surrounded by this receipt. The Russian government has been evasive when asked questions about Mezgoria, and the Russian government claimed Mezgoria was a bunker for high level officials, a food cache, and a mining operation. So, which is it? We don't know, but according According to the most believable reports, it's a nuclear missile site that allegedly has automatic missiles that can be controlled remotely. Now, some people think this place is Russia's Area 51, but regardless, it seems like we might never know what's so special about, about this place. Grand Shine of Isle, Japan is next on our list. Japan is a land of shrine culture and is home to approximately 1,000 shrines. But did you know that the Isle Grand Shrine is one of the most important as well as the most expensive of all the shrines in Japan? The Grand Shrine Isle in Japan is a very important place for the Shinto religion because it was built to honor Amaterasu, a goddess of the sun and the universe. Now, interestingly, this temple is rebuilt every 20 years according to the Shinto idea of death and birth. Every time they reconstruct the shrine, they keep on using a wood joining technique and never utilize nails, which is pretty cool. Now, to keep the place holy, only priests and members of the imperial family of Japan can go there. Everyone else can gaze at the temple from the outside through wooden fences. Now, on to certain Surtsey, Iceland. Surtsey, one of the youngest islands in the world, appeared due to a volcanic eruption that lasted from 1963 to 1907. These days, though, it's only used for scientific purposes. Visitors, except for research groups, are forbidden to visit this island because scientists want to understand how ecosystems form without any human influence. Now, free from human interference, Surtsey has been producing unique long term information on the colonization process of new land by plant and animal life. Since they began studying the island in 1964, scientists have observed the arrival of seeds carried by ocean currents, the appearance of molds, bacteria, and fungi, followed in 1965 by the first vascular plant, of which there were 10 species by the end of the first decade. By 2004, they numbered 60 together with 75 bryophytes, 71 lichens, and 24 fungi. 89 species of birds have been recorded on Surtsey, 57 of which breed elsewhere in Iceland. Now, I understand why they wouldn't want everyday 
way humans to come to this place as they could ruin it, and they've never had an opportunity to study an island like war. Up next is Metro 2 Moscow. Metro 2 is the name given to a secret underground rail network built by Stalin in the 1930s to allow the Soviet police to move around the city rapidly without detection. It originally linked Stalin's dacha, suburban residents, the Ministry of Defense, command bunkers, and other military facilities. Larger and more extensive than the official metro system, it is unknown whether construction stopped after Stalin's death or if his successors continue to end it. Now, the system was also meant to serve as a protection against a nuclear attack, with a supposed giant bunker built that was able to house up to 300,000 people, along with an alternate command post for the Soviet High Command. There are even rumors that the network extends for miles outside Moscow, allowing Soviet leaders to flee in case the capital was hit by a nuclear attack. There are also rumors that the tunnels were used by the military to transplies, materials, and personnel between bunkers without exposure. Now, a tunnel leading into the Metro 2 system was discovered after the 1960s era Rosia Hotel near the Kremlin was demolished. The tunnel was referred to as D6, which is apparently KGB code for Metro 2. It is supposedly still operated by the Russian Ministry of Defense, but the Metro administration, however, denies existence. And lastly, we have Run It Island, Marshall Island. Between 1946 and 1958, the United States carried out 67 nuclear tests in the Pacific Ocean. The explosions were described as for the good of mankind and to all wars. Two thirds of the tests happened at Enoetok Hole, and they left behind a place seriously contaminated with radioactive material. Efforts to clean up the mess ran from 1977 to 1980, and there was military debris, shattered concrete, and soil tainted with elements such as plutonium, cesium, and strontium. All this toxic waste, 85,000 cubic meters of it, was scooped up and taken to a tiny patch of land called Runet Island, a place that was so badly contaminated that scientists said it could never be cleaned up. On Runet, there was already a huge void left behind by one of the blasts called the Cactus Raider. Now it was lined with concrete and the crud was dumped in. Then they sealed off the dump with a big concrete dome. But to save costs, the bottom of the crater was not lined, so radioactive contamination has leaked into seawater, and there are serious concerns about how permanent the contaminant structure really is. Needless to say, the only people who visit Reddit Island are government scientists protected by hazmat kits. Now, how they could get away with this? Absolutely horrible. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 banned places more restricted than Fort Knox. If you could visit any of these places, where would you choose? And we're starting things off with the White House Situation Room. The Situation Room is the nerve center for the United States National Security and Crisis Management. It may be an utter shock to you, but this place is off limits to the public? and even access by government officials is tightly controlled. Its main purpose is to provide the president with up to the minute info during emergencies and crises, from military actions to natural disasters. The room is equipped with advanced communication technology, classified information systems, and video conferencing capabilities so that the president has all the necessary tools to make critical decisions. I'm picturing that scene in like every big budget action movie where there's a bunch of guys in suits sitting around a big table. There's a big like floating head talking about hey, this is going on here and all these screens popping up probably doesn't look anything like that but one can hope of course anything top secret where the government is concerned has its fair share of conspiracies attached to it one is uh, that the situation room has secret archives containing information about extraterrestrial encounters or advanced technology. Another is that the Situation Room has been used for covert operations and shadowy government activities, which isn't really a conspiracy. That's just obviously exactly true. Number nine, the Coca-Cola Vault. Deep in the bowels of the world of Coca-Cola Museum in Atlanta, there is a vault that houses one of the most top secret artifacts in the United States of America. Legend has it that this vault safeguards the secret recipe for Coca-Cola, the closely guarded elixir that has delighted the taste buds of not just Americans, but soda freaks from all over the world for over a century. The level of protection here is almost on par with Fort Knox, but of course, where there's a vault, there are bound to be whispers and rumors. Some suggest that the recipe is actually stored on an ancient scroll guarded by a mythical soda deity. Others wonder if the vault conceals a secret passage to a parallel soda universe. Unfortunately, unless you spend your days striving for employment at this establishment in order to tend to the vault yourself, you and I will never truly know what wonders are stored 
inside that place. There are wonders that are very much available to you right here on this channel. So uh, hit that subscribe button. Now let's turn our attention to the legendary Fort Knox. This fortress was established in 1936 in Kentucky. It's a highly secure facility that houses a significant portion of the US government's gold reserves. It's surrounded by layers of defense. Its security measures include armed guards, electronic surveillance, and impenetrable vaults. The depository's primary purpose is to safeguard the nation's wealth, but what else could they be holding in there? One claim suggests that the gold within Fort Knox has actually been replaced with replicas in order to kind of avert everyone's attention from the real location of the goods. Another theory is that Fort Knox holds more than just gold, classified documents, advanced technology, or even extraterrestrial artifacts safely hidden inside these impenetrable vaults. Now, in many cases, the bodies are never recovered, but even stranger, some have been found in Lake Tahoe, even though they drowned in Pyramid Lake. Moving on to the Flannan Isles. The Flannan Isles are a group of seven rocky, uninhabited islands in Scotland. In 1899, a lighthouse was built on the highest hill on the largest island, Ellen Moor. Before the year was over, three of its lighthouse keepers disappeared. On December 7, 1900, Donald MacArthur, Thomas Marshall, and James Ducat began what was a two-week rotation as keepers of the lighthouse. The superintendent of lighthouses, Robert Muirhead, was the last one to see them alive when he performed a routine check. Heavy mist around the island caused problems as the lighthouse was also monitored by a telescope from the mainland, allowing the men to signal for help if they needed, but with the mist they couldn't see. The lighthouse was visible on December 7th and 12th, but a passing ship reported that the light was off on the 15th. It was not seen again until the 29th, eight days after the men should have ended their rotation. Their relief arrived late due to bad weather and found that a clock had stopped, no fire was burning, and a meal was sitting on the table untouched. But the men were gone and they were never seen again. Next, let's talk about Lake Anjikuni. Lake Anjikuni is a remote lake in the Northern Territories of Canada. Covered with ice and snow for half of the year, it forms part of a string of waterways that the Inuit use for fishing and trade. In November 1930, a fur trapper named Joe LaBelle passed through a small Inuit community near Anjikuni Lake and found that all of its inhabitants were gone. Just poof. There was no evidence of foul play, but it was clear that something happened. Food was hung over fire pits, projects were left half finished, and seven sled dogs tied to posts had starved to death. LaBelle reported his findings to the Northwest Mountain Police, and the police found that the Inuit had been missing for eight weeks weeks before LaBelle's visit, but could not locate them or uncover what happened. Adding to the mystery, officers reported seeing blue, unnatural pulsing lights over Lake Anjikuni. Superstition Mountains are our next location. Okay, so with a place called Superstition Mountains, I feel like if you're willing to go there, I feel like that's on you. Yeah. The Superstition Mountains east of Phoenix, Arizona are well known for being the resting place of the Lost Dutchman's treasure, but it is also full of unfriendly wildlife, sheer drop-offs, deep canyons, and wild swings in temperature. Not to mention the many mysterious disappearances, strange sounds, and unexplained deaths that gave it its name, Superstition. Now, more hikers disappear in the Superstitions than any other mountain range, claims George Johnson, president of the Superstition Mountain Museum. Now, the average is four to five hikers per year. Such two hikers were Aldof Ruth and James A. Cravey. Treasure hunter Aldof Ruth acquired maps to old mines, convinced that one of them would lead to the lost Dutchman's treasure. Now instead, they led to his disappearance and death. A message in a bottle revealed that Ruth had broken his leg and needed help, but hinted that he had found the treasure before becoming injured. In December 1932, a bullet hole was discovered in his skull a mile from the rest of his body. Similarly, in 1947, the headless body of a prospector named James A. Cravey was found tied up in a blanket while his head was 30 feet away. Let's discuss Odessa's catacombs. It said on New Year's Eve in 2005, a girl named Masha went out with a large group of friends to celebrate and found an entrance to the mines of Odessa's catacombs. Now, the catacombs are not easy to navigate, especially when you're drunk like Masha might have been that night. By some estimates, they span 1,500 and 50 miles. Now, the teens are said to have stayed down there all night, but they left in the morning. 
well without Masha. About four months after New Year's in April 2005, word spread among cave explorers that there was a fresh body down there. A photo taken in the catacombs shows three blank-faced boys who look like they're in their early teens, posing like they've just stumbled upon the body. In the photo, Masha is unidentifiable beyond simply being a human. She lies on her left side, legs curled like she's sleeping, while the upper half of her decomposing body has lost its form altogether. Now two years passed and no one retrieved the body. Then it's said that a famous journalist delivered a story to government officials, and it's not clear what the journalist wrote, but allegedly the government got moving and removed the body less than 24 hours later. Moving on to the water tank. On January 26, 2013, Canadian tourist Elisa Lam checked into the Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. Now, when she never checked out on February 1st, nor had any contact with her parents, the Los Angeles Police Department was contacted. On February 19th, 18th, days from the last time she was seen, Elisa's body was found floating and naked in a water tank on the roof of the Cecil Hotel. Her body was found due to hotel guests complaining about the hotel's water pressure. According to the hotel's manager, when she first checked in, she was staying in a hostel-style room with other travelers, but later was moved to her own private room due to complaints from her roommates about odd behavior. The last time she was seen was on surveillance footage on the hotel's elevator. Now the footage shows Elisa acting strange, almost like she was hiding. After her body and the surveillance footage were found, it suggested that she was on some sort of hallucinogenic drug, but toxology studies reported that there were no traces of any drugs or alcohol that could have contributed to her death. To this day, no one knows how she was able to access the roof or climb into the water tank and shut the 20 pound lid by herself. Next is the abandoned house. On May 8th, 2008, Josh Maddox left the house, telling his sister Kate that he was going out for a walk, but when he failed to return later that evening, the family became worried. On May 13th, five days after he disappeared, his father Mike called the police to report Josh missing. The authorities, friends, and family scoured the neighborhood and nearby Parkland where Josh may have decided to go walking, but after months of searching, nothing had been uncovered and hopes faded. Then, seven years later, in August 2015, less than a mile away from Josh's home, property developer Chuck Murphy was demolishing an old wood cabin. Work to demolish the chimney inside the cabin started, and to the surprise of the demolition team, crammed inside the brickwork was a mummified body, which was later confirmed as Josh. His body was naked apart from a thin shirt, and his clothes were neatly stacked inside the cabin. An autopsy found no evidence of drugs in Josh's remains, and there were no broken bones, no knife marks, no bullet holes. They said it was very confusing, but that it was not an instant death. Now whatever happened to Josh appears to forever remain a mystery. And last on our list is the Nutty Putty Cave. The Nutty Putty Cave, first explored in 1960 by Dale Green and Friends, is currently owned by the Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. Before 2009, this cave had four separate rescues of cavers and boy scouts who got stuck inside the cave's tight twists, turns, and crawls. A gate was installed on May 24, 2006, and the cave was temporarily closed. In early 2009, proper management was established and an application process was developed to ensure safety precautions were being met. On May 18th, 2009, the cave was reopened to the public, and on November 24th, 2009, a man named John Edward Jones became stuck and subsequently died in the cave after being trapped inside for 27 to 28 hours. John and three others had left their party in search of the birth canal, a passageway with a turnaround at the end. John entered an unmapped passageway, which he wrongly believed to be the canal, and found himself at a dead end, with nowhere to go besides a narrow vertical fissure. Believing this to be the turnaround, he entered head first and became wedged upside down and stuck. Now this sounds like an absolute nightmare. A large team of rescue workers came to his assistance, but all rescues failed and John passed away in the cave. Rescuers concluded that it would be too dangerous to attempt to retrieve his body, so the landowner and John's family came to an agreement that the cave would be permanently closed with the body sealed inside as a memorial to him. Explosives were used to collapse the ceiling close to John's body, and the entrance hole was filled with concrete to prevent further access. But wow, what a horrible thing to happen. Mm -hmm.